Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, Metro Council Member Quante Toomes. She's the chair of the Budget and Finance Committee. The council's about to begin its budget process again to see what's going to happen this year with the budget and the tax rate. Uh, Council Member Toomes, the city has received now three rounds of federal money to help deal with and recover from the pandemic. Uh, this, it appears now you're going to have hundreds, if, if you have hundreds of thousands, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to, to deal with this time. This money does not seem to be as restrictive as the CARES Act was, but uh, we're not exactly sure still how you can use it. Has the mayor talked to you at all about this, or is he waiting to sort of outline his thoughts about it when he makes his state of Metro address to you on the April 29th? So we, um, I have not had a conversation with the mayor, an in-depth conversation regarding how those funds will be spent. We've had a, a general conversation uh, with him as well as some folks in his administration regarding uh, most likely focusing on one-time expenses because you don't want to get in a situation where you're creating work, recurring expenses that we can't afford down the road once that money runs out. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, to hear a plan in the near future. I don't know if it'll come with the state of metric address or not, uh, but I am hoping uh, to hear a plan for those funds. You know, last time we set up the COVID-19 oversight committee that uh, oversaw how those funds were dispersed. I don't know if we'll have a similar process this time or not. Do you have any ideas about how it ought to be spent? As you mentioned, it's not recurring money, it's one-time money. So perhaps in the area of pay raises, which I think employees are always looking for and people think they ought to get substantial raises more likely to be a bonus if you're going to use a one-time money since it's not going to be recurring you can't make it as a permanent pay raise so i know there there's still some um discontent over how uh hazard pay was done um previously and and we were stuck with the federal guidelines as to how that money was given out and so i know that as you said it will be welcome uh for a lot of employees if there was some type of one-time bonus uh that hasn't been discussed with me um but i'm, I'm sure it's on the table as well as still providing rental and, and mortgage assistance we still have folks who you know, are, are behind on their rent and we don't want to have people evicted or, or, or lose their homes. So there's still a, a lot of work to be done that was not covered by the last batch of money that we got. You know, it was $120 million, which is a significant amount of money, but there's so much need. Um, so there's, I think there'll be plenty of opportunities to identify some one-time expenses where we can provide assistance. Our, our small businesses are still in need of help. So there's still a lot of need out there uh, that we can put that money to good use. You've been in the council about a year and a half. Uh, you're already in a major leadership position in the council. Um, from the outside, people who have not looked at your resume might think, gee, is she ready to do that? But you have quite a resume to be able to, to address the budget and kind of tax issues that are going to be before the council this year. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I've been an attorney for almost 17 years. Uh, I'm actually a government attorney. I've been doing that for 13 years. Uh, I have a background in finance, have an MBA from Emory University, as well as a, a master's in, in tax law from the University of Alabama Law School. So I have a significant uh, experience with, you know, dealing with government officials, legislation, advising, uh, thinking on my feet and understanding the, the nuances of, of finance and, and tax. So uh, I feel prepared for the role. And also I had the opportunity to serve as vice chair under Councilman Mendez, who's an excellent teacher and is able to, to break things down so that you understand it and can give you uh, all of the historical background. So between my own background that I came in with and, and learning under him, I, I felt prepared for the role. Uh, the council's had a very challenging first year and a half, perhaps the most challenging first year and a half ever for a metro council. You had the pandemic, the economic shutdown, the tax hike, racial unrest, a tornado, the echo windstorm, and then, of course, the Christmas Day bombing on 2nd Avenue. Anybody who runs for office knows they're going to be in for some difficult times, but has this been even tougher than you expected? Uh, it, it has been. So I expected it to be a lot of work. And, you know, on, on day one, even, you know, before I took my oath of office, I was getting phone calls about different issues in the district and, and in the city. So I expected there to be a lot of work. I did not, uh, and I'm sure my colleagues as well, didn't expect so many uh, crisis situations. Because also when we came in, uh, that's when, you know, we had the visit from the comptroller, 
about our fiscal year 20 budget not being structurally balanced. There was the issue with the uh, Metro Water being a distressed utility. Then we had, you know, like you ran down the list, the tornado, the pandemic. So there's just been a lot of crisis situations back to back to back to back. Uh, but I, I think that we've handled it well. We've um, worked together as, as colleagues and we've, we've done the best that we can to keep uh, Nashville on course and, and stable. You have a husband and four children. How are they adjusting to you being in elected office? <laughs> uh, they've adjusted pretty well. Uh, I, I don't think I could do what I do if I didn't have a, a very good uh, partner in my husband who can, you know, uh, pick up the slack and, and take care of the kids just as well as I can. Uh, my kids are just used to me being busy. When they imitate me, they uh, pretend that they're typing on a computer. <laughs> That's the image that they have of me, that I'm always working and busy, but I do try to to make time for them and, and make sure I'm trying to, you know, juggle everything. The council has been meeting under emergency orders and rules set down by Governor Lee. It has helped get a lot of city's routine business done, but the challenges of the technology have often been a little bit difficult. Uh, the meetings have also been running late, particularly last year, particularly during budget session. Last year, you went every meeting into the wee hours of the morning. One even went until sunrise the next day. Uh, that's, yep. is that, how difficult is that that you came home after you know, the sun was up and people were beginning their day and you hadn't been to bed? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's hard. It's, it's, it's worthwhile work, but it is definitely hard work. Um, you know, I don't think any of us expected meetings to, to last so long. And I know for a lot of those meetings, we had a lot of technical difficulties, which stretched the meetings out even longer. Um, but as long as we're being, you know, productive and, and taking care of the city's business, um, it's, it's worthwhile. You know, you just get a little sleepy. <laughs> Metro Councilwoman Quante Toombs is our guest. She's the chair of the Budget and Finance Committee as the council's soon to begin its budget season. Back to continue our conversation with the council lady after you watch these messages.